In this video, I want to go over how I go from a research topic, a big research field, to an actual finished project inside of Obsidian, going from research to idea to sources all the way through. So if we have a look into my Obsidian, you can see my main dashboard. I hold control on my keyboard and scroll on my mouse while I can zoom out, and I see essentially everything that I need to see in this dashboard. On the right is my group. This is the, the group for the Danny Hatcher YouTube channel, the one you're watching right now. This is the group with three cards inside of it for the Educational Science YouTube channel, the other one that I run, and these are the projects that I spend most of my time researching because these are related to the research fields, which are the ones in the middle, that I'm diving into. And if we have a look at the top, some of them are active, which is in this top group, some of them are less active, these are research library, and most of these files, you could call them maps of content or research files or uh, anything else that you really wanted, Inside each of these files is essentially a list of all of the research around a specific topic. So if I go into school education, for example, you can see at the top of the file I have the class because it's a research file type. The priority is high because I, it's a high priority at the moment for me when it comes to education and research and things that I'm doing for the other channel, the Educational Science channel. The state is a mess and that's because in the new year I want to try and organize some of these research files a little bit more so I've added in this state, so where the state currently is. If I go backwards you'll be able to see when this loads that I've got different states. I have a mess so it's just loads of links and points and loads of things just added into the file. Some of them that have actually been condensed into points of information. So if I control and hover over, there's the projects about creator media, and then we've got different points with references and footnotes towards the end. So this file, this research file has been condensed into points, not just words. Whereas this one, if I control and hover and scroll down, you can see these all have loads of further reading. So there's projects in there, references down the bottom. Uh, so there's loads of projects in there, but there's still further reading here and sources at the top for me to continue the research. And in an ideal world, these research files would be just project, the state being project. So it's just a list of all the projects. These are obviously video projects. These are green. So I've done them. These are ones related to writing apps, projects, etc, etc. These are podcast projects that I did in the past. So in an ideal world, all the research files would just say projects as a state, but most of them are a bit of a mess. So if you go back to the school education, and scroll down, you can see each one of these are project files. If I hover over, we've got source. So this is just one source that I found. I thought that's interesting. So it's a project. It's about the Gatwick Airport education system inside of the UK. And you can see there are lots of different projects inside of this research file, most of them obviously videos. But because I use this file as lots of other things previously, there are some points here with references that will link to footnotes down the bottom, which means it's a little bit messy. If I open up my right sidebar, you can see I've got a Lot of different headings for different sections so self-taught learning philosophy learning philosophy bullying in school tech teaching and loads of other different things inside of this file so it's all research around school education but some of them could be refined a little bit more so inside the phone ban this is a section where i've just got three projects so this heading section inside of school education research is somewhat complete because it's organized for me so I know okay this was the project I did about the flawed phone laws and this is the philosophy behind phone laws this is phone impacting memory it's a, more of an article and then this is the UK phone ban inside of schools that I'm looking at doing as, a, as another project so these are different projects inside of a research topic so I can easily find the different narratives that I've got or perspectives and interpretations that I have on information that I've consumed around this research topic and as we scroll down you can see there are lots of different points from other sources that's what this icon means and then as we scroll down I've got all of the other references that I, I still need to go through so I know this research file is a mess but most of my time if I go back to my dashboard is actually spent inside of these projects so if I go into the Ofsted video project this is active so the tick box down here has been ticked so the file of Ofsted if I click on the icon you can see active is true so it's a active essay file that is true because it's been ticked inside of here which moves it up if it wasn't ticked so if i was to tick it off it would come down to the high priority if priority was high i can change it i can click on there and go between high interesting medium curious or low and essentially any file that 
isn't high priority is in all the ideas so there's only a few in here but there's lots to come from this long list down here so as most of my time is spent inside of these projects what do they look like well if we take a look this is the project that's going to go live very soon it's currently in the peer review process but this is where it starts out at so when I add a new file it uses this template so there'll always be a video it will start out as high priority so I can see it and actually work out where I want it to be when it's in those lists of things in the dashboard then I have tick boxes that says Morgan so is it in my task manager Morgan is it done yes or no obviously <laughs> I won't dig it off until it's done which is why it's not in there is it active or not so that's where the active tick box will put it into this query result the high priority will put it into this query result the priority here and then this one's just showing anything that has anything else uh, and then we have the stage of the video essay and that's going between planning so I always start planning which is why the template it always starts out at planning whereas as you can see in Ofsted, this is currently in review. So as I'm going through planning, then scripting, editing, review, and then I have paused just in case there are videos that I've decided to pause for whatever reason, maybe someone else is scripting it. The channel property having two drop downs, educational science or Danny Hatcher. And that way, if I go to my dashboard, you can see I'm splitting the educational science videos here by educational science there. And then the Danny Hatcher here is obviously Danny Hatcher inside of this field. So if it's the Danny Hatcher channel, it will appear in these three. If it's in the educational science, it will appear in these three. And that's the information stored at the top of the Ofsted project file inside of the property information using the metadata menu community plugin to help me customize, add, change all of the, the property information and do the editable queries inside of the canvas. And you could do this with data view. You could do this in lots of different ways. I use metadata menu. And as I scroll down, you can see I'm playing with some video titles and some packaging of the video here. Obviously, if it's a, an article, you wouldn't do a thumbnail. Maybe you have a hook at the top or the title ideas at the top. This is just me scratch padding working at the top so I know roughly where it goes. Underneath that is where I put all of my sources. And I put the sources in as tick boxes because when I'm going through a source, sometimes you can see here, these are just links to either videos. Uh, so in this case, it's a YouTube video. Sometimes it's a BBC news clip or a sounds clip. And each of these sources I will go through. And if there is something useful, I will then add it above here. So it's below the tick boxes of all of the sources, but above the script heading and inside of this section, I will then have all of the points of interest. If we go back to the dashboard and go into, let's go to state of education, it's what I'm scripting at the moment, you can see same layout, we've got the properties at the top, we've got the sources, there's nothing above it because I haven't looked at packaging or anything like that yet. Then underneath we have all of these different points of interest. You can see on the side, if I go to script, this is where I'm actually writing the script. So everything above the script heading are all different points that I'm not sure where to go, what to do with yet. Uh, as you can see, there's lots going on in the script. There we go. Uh, and we get back to all of the source points. And as I go through a source, I will then link the point. So you can see here, if I click on there, I've got the link to the source, the actual piece of information on the word. So when I'm writing, I've just zoomed in. If I'm writing a point and then I have a link, I'll highlight it and then paste the link of the source. So let's just imagine that this source, so I'm going to copy this. I would normally copy this from the browser, the web browser rather than in here, but you can do it in both places. Uh, and then I'll highlight and then paste. Now I know where this point comes from. So when I'm writing it in the script and when I'm putting it in the video essay, I can just source it appropriately. However, some of you that are familiar with the channel may know that I use Otero and that's what all of these at symbols are for. So let's just go to this one at the bottom. If I middle click on the mouse, it creates a new tab. This is a source and this is actually stored inside of my Zotero. So it's an article that I've read. It's a it's actually a document download from, from the Ofsted. <laughs> and these are all highlights that, Zotero, that I've highlighted in Zotero and I've brought in. I can open it back up in Zotero if I want to have a look at more context. And each of these highlights, if I find the point relevant, I will just click Control C, go over Control V and paste because Obsidian looks at the block automatically. That's what the highlighted uh, color is. So I can copy all of that. So Control C, Enter, Enter, Control V, paste. And I will just go down adding points in from each of the sources to the above section, the outline, I guess you could say, above the script below the list of sources, which gives me all of the essential points and main pieces of information, the highlightable points that I need to write the script. And at the end, I'll get a script, something like this. So all of these 
sources have been used. I've, I've gone through them, I've either used them or I've added them to my other sources list inside of Google Docs, which is linked at the bottom of the video. And all of the information, or like all of the source information is inside the script. So when I'm going through and editing, I can add the source because it's linked inside of each of the points that I've made. If it's a quote, obviously it's a quote block. And this is what a finished-esque script will look like. This is a highlight of something that I thought, you know what, that will be a good visual for whatever it is that I'm doing with the visual aesthetic on the video. Uh, so as you scroll down, it's very much repeated. It's just a normal script with linked words as I go. But if I move over to this one that I'm currently scripting, you can see how I'm working. What I do is I split it. So shift and then right arrow key splits it. So now I have the same file open twice. And what I can do up here is have all of my points then on this side actually go through to different sections. So say I'm writing something in uh, the volume one introduction and I, I want to add a point, I can come in, copy, and then paste it in, reword whatever I want to, or maybe I want to use it as an actual quote, I can add it in. So I'm going through all of the points, going down the points that I have in a list, adding it to each section that I want to write about. So if I'm writing a much longer video essay, which this one is, I have all of the sections. I can go, okay, I this, this point, for example, is curriculum related. It would help if I actually clicked on the right document. <laughs> so if I'm clicked on this side and then I click curriculum, it throws me down to curriculum and then I write the, the point in. So I copy and then I paste and then I go to the next line, uh, 81 countries. Well, that will be in the introduction. So I go to introduction and then I put that information in here. And that's how I would go backwards and forwards between the same document, but uh, split screened. And as I jump down to some different working parts, you can see here equity. It's a, a subsection. I thought, you know what, I'm going to write something about equity, about the EPs of report, because the volume one was about equity. But I don't want these three points as part of my introduction. So what I actually did while I was writing is I saw this point at the top as I was going through on the left side. And then on the right side, as I was going through the introduction, I thought, you know what, I don't really want to talk about these yet. I want to talk about them as another point, which is why I made the heading. I added it down the bottom. So when I scroll down, I can get to that part of the script. So there's the performance uh, there's dealing with pandemic. So I got all of these points that have been added in as I'm going through the highlighted points, but I haven't scripted it yet, which is why I've got this divider there. So I'm going to start writing the script about this section here and then add the points in relevant as I see fit as I'm going through the script. And as you continue scrolling you can see there's the equity and the equity so i've got all of the points that i've brought in from different sources will be gone through as just points and then will be scripted if i don't get to them as i'm going through the script hopefully that makes sense so if i go to this video script just to outline what i've said there so i have the highlighted points on the left and then i script on the right and any points that i go through that was on the left that doesn't fit the part of the script that i'm writing gets sectioned inside of the later part of the script so when i get down there i can add them into the appropriate section so my first draft is when all of those points at the top of the script file have been added into the script and make sense in some way in the order of the article that I'm writing. Now, I could revise and revisit two, three, four, five different times with an essay. And obviously, once I've recorded it, I've got a, an audio to it. I then may add or take away parts during the edit or maybe during the peer review. Someone says, oh, you should be clearer on this or you don't need that. Then I will edit there as well. So it doesn't finish it is not done until it's actually been published and even once it's published then there's obviously feedback that goes in and then iterations moving forwards with newer videos and that's where the video relates back to the research file which i can then look at future research projects to say oh i did a video about that wherever ago or i wrote an article about that whenever ago and then i can add all the research together which whether that's a research file a map of content an overview a summary whatever note you want to call it that's how I do it and that's how I'm going to be doing it at the start of 2024 and we'll see where it takes me.